In the first video on typography, I showed you how to use processing to put type up on the screen. It turns out that processing has a bunch of other typesetting tricks up its sleeve, so let's take a look at those now. Perhaps the most important one is where the text goes when you put it up on the screen. There's always a reference point, but where does the text appear with respect to that point? Well, you can control it both horizontally and vertically. If you align the left edge of the text with the reference point, then the left edge of the text sits right where the reference point is. If you choose center, then of course the text is centered, and if you choose right, it is right aligned. So you can give processing any one of these three options, and the text will be placed with respect to your reference point in this way. Well, you can do the same thing vertically. You can place the top of the text at the reference point, what's called the baseline of the text. Now this isn't the bottom of the text, but it's the bottom of most of the letters. In this example, F, R, and O. G, which has a descender that goes below the baseline, will actually dip below the baseline. Using this option, it looks like the text is sitting right on the line through your reference point. You can, of course, center the text vertically as well, and you can place the bottom of the text at the reference point. The default is left and baseline. So if you don't change the defaults in any way, you'll get the sort of appearance that we're seeing here for left and baseline. But you can change both the horizontal and vertical alignments. And the way you do that is you call text align with a capital A in the middle. Text align can take either one or two arguments. If you give it just one argument, it refers to the horizontal positioning of the text. And you can give it three different arguments, left, center, and right. These aren't strings. They don't have double quotes. These are keywords, and they need to be typed in all caps, just like this. If you want to change the vertical alignment, you call text align with two arguments, first the horizontal and then the vertical. So the horizontal value, just like before, is left, center, or right, then a comma, and the vertical value, one of these four options. Although you can set just the horizontal, or both horizontal and vertical, you can't set just the vertical. You can also control the size of your text by calling text size. Notice that there's a capital S there in the middle. It takes one argument, which is an integer, telling it how many points high the text should be. So here's our output window. Suppose that I call text size of 48, and then I tell it to type the word bananas. It might come out this large on my screen. If I instead call text size 96, which is twice the size, and then I draw bananas, we will get something that's twice as large. Now you need to be careful with text size. Let me show you why. In this sketch, I'm using a VLW file that I saved at 12 points. Right now, both the upper and lower line are both set at just that size, 12 points. If I use text size to make the bottom type larger, it gets bigger and bigger, but you can see it's starting to look pretty crummy and that's because we're just blowing up the bits that are stored in the VLW file. So this is fine if you're just trying to sort of see how things are going to look, but if you really want to have text that appears very big, you're going to want to save a VLW file that has a large font size. The same thing applies if you try to shrink it too much. Here I'm setting the top line at 240 points, and as I make the bottom line smaller, you can see it can get smaller and smaller and it looks fine, but after a certain point, it starts to look pretty lousy. So again, by making the type size too much different than the value that you saved in the VLW file, the text starts to look a little bit lousy. So try to save the VLW file at about the size that you're going to want to use it on the screen. And if you want to use the same typeface at multiple different sizes on the screen at different times, then just save multiple VLW files, one for each size that you anticipate wanting to use. Even with all of this, there are times when using text size is really great. Here's an example. Here's some text that's typeset at 48 points, and I can start animating it. All I'm doing here is calling text size from one frame to the next, making it bigger and then smaller, bigger and smaller, and so it appears that the text is bouncing in size. So this is kind of a nice effect, and I did it using nothing more than text size. If I were to freeze it when it was really big or really small, it would look kind of lousy, but the fact that it's moving lets me get away with it. Processing has another trick up its sleeve, which is to typeset text in a box. 
To do this, we call text just like before. The first three arguments are just like before, the string we want to typeset and its X and Y position, but you include two more arguments, and these are the width and height of a box that starts at that X, Y. To see this in action, suppose that this is our output window. I'm going to create a big string by taking two strings and then putting them together. So I'm going to call text S1 plus S2. Remember the plus for strings just puts one after the other. The corner point is 150 and the box is 300 wide by 500 high. So here's the box. Now processing doesn't actually draw the box. I'm drawing it here so that we can see it. And then it will set the type within the box, automatically wrapping it. So this is a great thing. It's like a tiny little word processor. It automatically wraps the text inside of a box. If you've used different typesetting programs, you know that there's an additional control called letting. And letting tells processing how much space appears from one line to the next. This kind of corresponds to whether the type is being set single spaced, double spaced, triple spaced, and that sort of thing. To set letting, you call text letting with a capital L in the middle, with a number of points. And that tells it how much space appears between lines. So here are two different output windows. In the first, I'll call text letting with 48 points for a 48 point typeface. And now I'll type some string called message inside of a box. So here it is, the message is our string from the last example. Now I'll change the letting. On the right hand side, I'll say text letting 72. That's one and a half times what we have on the left. We'll typeset the very same text, and the result is that the lines are one and a half times more spread out than they were before. So let's look at all of these in action. Here I'm calling text align left baseline. In other words, I'm just telling it to do the default. And you can see that our string has its bottom left corner at the reference point. If I change the horizontal choice, I can set it from the right, and you can see it's all smushed over on the left hand side, or I can set the type in the center and I can run through the vertical choices as well. So, okay, let's return to the default. And now I'll set the type in a box. Tell you what, let's make the box nice and wide and see how the type is automatically wrapping every time we change the size of the box. I can also make the box shorter and notice what happens, the text just gets clipped. It prints as much text as it can within the box and the rest gets thrown away. So if I make the box bigger, now I can do something like change the letting. So let's increase the letting. And so now we have more space between each line and I'll decrease the letting. So we have less space between each line. I can also change the size of the text. So if I make it big, notice that it's changing the wrap points to fit in the box. And as the text gets bigger, I might want to change my letting. And of course I might want to make my box bigger and I can make my text smaller. And so I might want to use less letting so it looks good. So we have control over all of these things to get the text to look the way we like. So let's summarize what we've seen before. To set the horizontal alignment, we call text align with one argument. To set the horizontal and vertical, we call text align with two arguments. And that lets us tell processing how to typeset the text with respect to the reference point using all the options we saw before. Left, center, right for horizontal and top, baseline, center, bottom for the vertical. If we want to change the size of the text from the size that's saved in the VLW file, we call text size with an argument that tells it the size of the text. If it's nice and big, we get something big. If it's small, we get something small. And if you make the size too much different than what you saved in the VLW file, either much bigger or much smaller, it's gonna to start to look crufty. So you might wanna keep a whole bunch of VWL files around. If you want to set the type in a box, we call text with two additional arguments, the width and height of the box that we want the text to appear within. And the text will automatically appear in that box and it will get wrapped. If you want to change the spacing between the lines, you call text letting. You give it the number of points between lines. And if you make the letting very small, the lines are very closely bunched together. If you make the letting big, the lines are spread apart and any text that doesn't fit in the box is just ignored. And now you know how to exercise all kinds of control over the text that appears on screen in your sketch.